Hello, hello, and welcome to another episode of the Loom Plotters. Plotters? <laughs> yes. Pl what? what? Is, that, is that what we're Loom doing? Plotters? Okay. All right. Making sure. Yeah. So. Yeah, here we go. Yes, back again. All right. And and Ralph has some news for us. He has sold some watches, bought some watches. Uh, why don't you talk to, yeah. to you know, tell the listeners what you're wearing and why? Well, I have to confess. I have to make a big confession. I have uh, done what I'm, uh, uh, what I usually advise against. I have um, rekindled my relationship with an ex. Right. So, <laughs> is it the same ex or is it similar? <laughs> it's same, not same, exact, but different. Yeah, yeah, same, same. O original copy. Um, it's, uh, <laughs> <laughs> it's, uh, yeah. I have, I have previously advised that if you are selling a watch, and then you're regretting it to a certain extent. Re just remember that you sold it for a reason, right? So you you had a specific and good reason why you sold the watch. If it's not just money because you needed the money, but just that's a, then a legitimate reason to rebuy it. But in this case, I thought, all right. But it's been years, and I'm still thinking about the watch. And I thought to myself, if it ever comes in my reach, like locally available for a good price, maybe I just should jump on it again. And it did. So I sold my IWC Portofino Chrono, uh, pretty much for what I what I bought it for. So that's pretty good. Um, but I threw in an extra strap, so it's 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 a good deal at the moment. So um, yeah, I, I sold this, and I thought, okay, I'll buy something that I really really love and I really want back. So, I but you got, also put some things on auction, right? I, I did, but this uh, will only come in a, in two weeks in the next. Auction. Which which watches? Um, how many? I think it was 12. <laughs> <laughs> yes. But listen. Anything listen no first, notable? Listen, listen, yeah, listen first when I, 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 I quickly say which ones there are. The Zin U50. The is, one you just got literally last yes. week. Yeah. Three, three weeks? Was it three weeks ago? I think it was three weeks yeah, ago. Yeah, I think so. Yeah. yeah. So that one is is gone. Uh, and it goes to, to auction because. Going. Um, because of the new one I got, it's a bit redundant, okay. I think. All right. Anyhow, but then, next, so yeah. Um, then the two swatch Hodinki, the nineteen ninety and nineteen eighty six. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The System fifty one. Then the two uh, two Tissots, one Tissot gentleman with a blue dial, and the Tissot PRX Powermatic eighty with a blue dial. Not the Baby glacier blue. blue. Or the... No, okay. no, the glacier blue I keep, but the the dark blue dial. Um, because again. Too many watches. Why uh, have two? Yeah. It makes no sense. Okay. Exactly. And um, then the, uh, what do I have? I have the, the metal G-Shock Casio. So the Casio in, in metal, the, the silver one. Again, um, let somebody else have uh, the pleasure of wearing this watch. Um, I'm not wearing it much. Uh, I stick to my square ones. A gray Casio, the older version. Right, the, the light gray one, also cool watch, but again, one too many. Uh, then I, two two squares, Casio squares, um, and uh, another Casio, the modded one that I modded into a, a the real, <laughs> the real royal, the, the real, the original Casio. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, so yeah, all of this is is gone, and then the two Hiroshige uh, Kurono Tokyo um, Urushi lacquer watch straps that I bought both limited edition sold out in within minutes and I got them I, I received them finally after two months wait and then I realized I don't have any watches where they actually fit well color wise so I never worn them which so, colors were they uh, it, both are black um no sorry one is black with red um Urushi lacquer designs and everything mm -hmm. is handmade so everything is slightly different uh, on, and unique and the other one is... So these um, are the ones with the patterns and the nice uh, engravings yeah. or whatever they want to call it. Yeah, it's, it's lovely straps. And they're made of deer leather, right? So uh, really amazing straps. Um, and they were not cheap, but... How yeah. much How much are they running? I think they were about 900 dirhams, something like that. So yeah, so it's not, not, a, not a cheap strap by any means. No, no, not, not at all. And then it comes without a buckle. So it's, it's really, you know, it's a... Mm -hmm. It's yep. a it's a 
really, really uh, amazingly handmade thing. And you, if you feel them, it's just amazing. This deer leather is, is just so subtle and soft. But again, I didn't have anything fitting for it. So I, I thought, okay, let them go and somebody else might fit, find something. And they are going on the auction and they will probably be, I think they will be starting at, let's say, 100 dirhams or so. Let's so see. It's a complete steal, 10%, not even. Okay. Yeah. Anyway, and so, all of this for? All of this. <laughs> not all of this. For? for. Obviously, I made more money than I needed for this particular yes, watch, yes. which is good because I wanted to consolidate, right? So I got this one and I was holding it in the camera for you here. This is the Breitling Super Ocean Arrow Hand, only made for two years, 2009 and 2010. If you can see, there's a the, the hour hand has a, is a small arrow. Yeah, yeah. And that is unique um, for this Super Ocean. In 2010... What, what did the other Super Oceans have? Um, just like the uh, Minute Hand, just a... Small, oh, just a stick hand. Yeah, a stick hand. Yeah. Um, and it came on this uh, professional tool, um, this diagonal shaped uh, bracelet. Yeah, the, the, the cool. diagonal bracelet. Yeah. It's cool. It's very, very brightling. Yeah, full set. And it, yeah, exactly. That's the brightling I need, full set. Um, it's in relatively good condition, not as good as a condition as it was, uh, as mine was when I sold it, because I sold mine exactly in April 2021. So it's now a bit more than two years ago. Uh, and I sold it because I wasn't wearing it a, month, uh, a lot, right? So, and now I decided to get it again. I like the red Super Ocean on the dial. I like the red second hand tip. Um, I really like this this slightly um, sunburst dial thing. It's a bit of a flashy watch to a certain extent, even though it's just black and steel. But um, yeah, 1500 meter water resistance. I think when you go back to the Super Ocean history, starting in the end of the 50s, like all the you know, uh, diving watches started at that time when the diving as a leisure activity started. And um, every version of the super ocean reached a new technological uh, yeah, limit, basically. I mean, this one was, I think, the pinnacle of it. I mean, 1,500 meters water resistance with a watch that is, uh, I think it was 10,000 dirhams at the time, list price here in, 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 in Dubai. Yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, it's pretty amazing, but 1,500 meters water resistance, 5,000 feet. And then, and after that, I do have to say the one yeah. thing that this, this to me, I don't know if it's just me or if it's the way you feel as well, but super oceans have strayed in my mind too far from the original Breitling, um, design ethos, right? Yeah. When you show me this yeah. and this to me is a Breitling without question. Yes. It's, it's but like when the you look at the new modern problem. ones, it's, it, I don't even know what it is, Yeah, what I know. it's trying to be. The, I'm totally with you. And that's why I, I didn't didn't decide to go into the new ones or anything. And and the funny thing is the new ones, the current Super Ocean still have the same movement. It's still an ITAR 28, 24, yep. dash 2. Uh, chronometer certified, but yeah. And so, yeah, there we go. I think the, the new ones have lost their plot a bit. I think it's it's too fashionable and it's 300 meter water resistance, which is by no mean bad. But the super ocean was always like pushing the limits, right? What was technically yeah. possible with a case What design. is yours? 1,500 meters. Has a helium meters? escape valve. Meters? Meters. 5,000 feet. Let me feet. see. Yeah. Show me again. Okay, okay. Is it really? Yeah, it is really. It says so on the dial. Are you sure it didn't say feet? 5,000 feet, 1,500 meters. Jesus. And where's yeah. the helium escape valve? Yeah. On, the, on the nine o'clock? Oh, sorry. Uh, it's not oh, it's 10 exact, exact, exactly on, on 10 o'clock like it is at the... And, I, and it's flat. Yes. It's the it's Rolex flat. style just, flat. And it's an automatic. Itself, so nothing protruding. <laughs> yeah. It's not a manual one. Sup <laughs> no, that, that's awesome. I had no idea they were that technically advanced. Yeah, they are. And, and, and I was thinking is, 500 meters maybe, you know, that, that no, would have been... 1,500. And it's, that's why I think, you know, when, when, when recently then, uh, you know, the, the, the sea dwellers came out and all of the stuff and you think, well... Breitling did that. And, and it's not for... a big watch. That's the thing is it, it goes <laughs> counterintuitive it, because people think that a big, you have to have a big watch to be yeah. super crazy it, waterproof. It is 42 millimeters and 15 millimeters tall. Um, Which is nothing. But since it's nicely shaped, especially also so the back of the it case, look, it doesn't it, look like it. It's pretty good. Yeah. I mean, think about it. The Plo Prof has less water resistance than this. Yeah, it's crazy, huh? And that is so, yeah, this is a honking big monster of a watch. <laughs> yeah, true. As we discussed last episode mm. about our 
least your your least favorite watch. Yes. I still love it. Yeah. So all right. So, so the good thing is, I sold my, I bought my Super Ocean back in the days for I think ten thousand was the list price. I bought it three months old, unworn, pre-owned for six thousand. Mm -hmm. Great deal at the time. I sold it for more than that. Ten years later, I wore this watch for ten years, got it serviced once, and then, um, and that's also funny. Full service. I paid. I got a fifty percent discount on the service. Eight hundred dirhams. Mm -hmm. Full yeah. service <laughs> back in the days. <laughs> Amazing. <laughs> With Amazing. Original. Anyhow, so that's yeah. that's uh, that's you don't get these times back. Um, and yeah, and I sold it for more than I bought it for after 10 years of wearing this watch, which was amazing. Mm -hmm. And now I bought this watch for less than I sold my old one for. So I'm a very happy person. <laughs> yeah, excellent. Congratulations. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I love it. So the so only I, thing that I bugs also me, had sorry, some sorry, fun. sorry, 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 sorry. I have to, one, one more thing and then I stop. Um, one thing that bugs me and I have to go back where I bought it um, because it's it, they give two years warranty on it. Um, it's unfortunately 10 seconds slow and I can't have slow watches. I don't mind watches that are too fast, way too fast, out of spec, all of the stuff. No worries, as long as it's too fast, but too too slow. That bugs the, that, that freaks me out. I, I can't have that. Sorry. And now, what are you wearing? So I, I want to say a little bit of a uh, story as well. Mm. Um, it's, I, I, I don't know if anybody saw, what would, depending on when this comes out, but on 1010, um, Hodinki did a big sale mm. and being the, the Hodinki connoisseur that I am, I, I bought seven or eight straps at half off. Um, and then a buddy of mine said, I bet they're all brown <laughs> and they were, <laughs> they were all different shades of brown. And then I said to myself, okay, this is stupid. What am I doing? I don't need to spend, you know, 2000 dirhams on a bunch of brown straps. So I canceled the order. Um, and then I went to my little strap box and I started digging around. Um, mm -hmm. The reason being is I had out of my collection, there was one watch that I never truly liked the strap that it was on, but I couldn't yeah. find anything better. And this was the the SBGM221, uh, the bigger Grand Seiko that I own. Mm -hmm. And it was on this, they called it a, a suede strap, but it was very small nap. To me, it just looked like regular leather but it was actually suede but it was just very short trimmed suede so and i owned a strap before which was a super hairy suede that i put on <laughs> a bunch of different watches and i loved that strap but it was a 20 millimeter Calling it and hairy. of course the grand seiko is 19 mm. yeah well i forgot about this strap for quite some time and just recently i i picked it out of the box and I said, what, what are the, uh, what are the chances being that these are, this one's a JPM strap made by Jean-Paul Menacuccio or whatever his name is, the, the Italian guy. Um, you know, they're handmade. What, what are the chances that it's not actually a 20 millimeter? I mean, mm. it's, they, they didn't, so I took my calipers out. It was 19.4. And Aye. I'm like, all right, now, now we're talking, now we're talking. Mm. What are the chances that the Grand Seiko is not 19 millimeters either? Measured the Grand Seiko. It's not 19. It's 19.23. Mm -hmm. So it's, here it is. I will put it up to the screen because I hate it. I cannot stand it when somebody squeezes a larger strap into a smaller yeah. um, lug width because it, it you see it smushing in mm -hmm. and then it immediately pops back out above the, the lugs. Yeah. Right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So I'm going to hold it up for you. And just look, this is the super hairy suede. So I don't know how well you could see it, but yeah, it's a very it, long yeah. hair. But look at how oh, it fits well. well it fits. Yeah. I mean, it's as if this was made for this. Perfect. So yeah. this now got me very excited because, you know, I love the fact that I found this in my in collection the, and I thought I had written it off and... Yeah, it worked. To it totally worked perfectly. preaching, preaching to the converted here with a with a good strap, I and I have, I've already put my brightening as well, the new brightening on. I think five different straps because twenty yeah. millimeter lug lug width. So it's it's plenty fantastic. of choice. Twenty right? is so nice. Yeah, yeah. So I got lucky with this one. I have to say, yeah. I, you know, what are the odds that both the watch is larger than nineteen millimeters and the strap is smaller than twenty? Eh, I like it. Yeah. Good, good. Uh, I, I was lucky that day. Very nice. So, 
and I yeah. saved 2,000 dirhams in straps, which I promptly I, I spent on. I didn't know. I, I, you told me that you had you, that you, that you invite uh, that you that you ordered so much from from Houdinki. I thought, okay, interesting. I see what you what 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 will come, but then uh, yeah, no, I know nothing will come. <laughs> nothing, nothing is not coming. I didn't need it ultimately. Yeah. Yeah, um, I'm good. not the it's person good. that switches. I, I so I will buy 10 straps and I will start pairing things until I find the pairing that I love, right? Mm -hmm. And ultimately, once you find that pairing, yeah, uh, for me, it stays on that. It lives on that strap. Yeah, that's I think, the way I roll. I, I think that's 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 true. I have I have a couple of watches where I have one strap, one bracelet, and that's it. Mm -hmm. Once you find yep. the perfect. Uh, strap for it and, and you know you're never going to beat it right you yeah, know correct. that there's this is it this is this is the pinnacle yeah. of this watch's existence right here yeah. so yeah um, I, i'm i'm a bit paranoid then when i find some a strap that is so well fitting then i always feel like i should have one in reserve right yes because and, and what uh, happens is, what, what what if if this gets out of production or it's a different color eventually or yeah, whatever and exactly. then i will stuck and i don't have the right strap for this watch so i should always have one in the back <laughs> so, exactly and, and, and that the is, same that, way yeah, but it is stupid actually right i mean no no it gets it gets but, worse because <laughs> um the once again these straps are handmade so you'll get another one and it's slightly longer or slightly uh -huh. shorter and it mm. doesn't fit the same because that's one thing that we often don't talk about yeah. is i have the perfect straps on some watches and i'm in between the holes for the buckle Right. right. It's either too right. loose or too mm. tight. So you have to remember sizing is also an important aspect in why a strap fits well on a watch because mm. it just fits. Yeah. Yeah. And if you so, if, if, if you ever seen a, a strap maker making these things, right, so they have this little like a like a brush, right, with these pins that mm -hmm. actually cut the holes in. So they put it on the strap and then they put they a hammer, hammer on top yep. and then that's basically cutting the holes out of it. So this is a hand, However, hand process. It's hand processed so, and the, all you have to do is by half a centimeter, move it up or down yeah, and it's an entirely different, different watch. Fit. Yeah, exactly. Completely yep. different fit. So this is the issue with ah, this. But yeah. anyway, and I have some straps like this, uh, uh, two of the same straps, okay. um, same manufacturer, Miltec, made by Strap Code. Um, and in the, they have 11 holes. It's a NATO. Yeah. You put them side by side and on one, it's like a centimeter lower than on the other strap. So, but the otherwise the exact same. Wow. So yeah, this is, this is common and this is a thing in handmade products. So yeah. Yeah. All right. So okay. now all that aside, all that rambling, uh, any, anything else you want to discuss before we move into today's topic? Wow. No, no, no. I'm, I think I'm good. Uh, oh, one thing. Yeah. Um, I have a new car battery jump starter and I wanted to share these, these amazing things that are super capacitors. Have you, okay. Have you ever heard about super capacitor uh, battery jump starters? Are they the small ones that it's not actually are really, insanely really, strong? Really, really that small? It's it's a uh, the same size as a kilo because it needs quite a lot of amps. But the thing is, which I, I like because I had a lithium ion one for it was like a power bank that mm -hmm. also can jump start the car, and it was serving me well for two and a half years or three years. It worked great. I helped a lot of um, neighbors with dead yep. batteries after the summer when they come back from vacation and it doesn't start. So I helped a lot of people with this this thing. But now I just, every few, three months, I have a reminder to recharge the battery because, you know, it discharges mm -hmm. and then yep. lithium, these batteries take a couple of hours to charge. So it's annoying when it's empty when you need it, right? Anyhow, so I realized oh, it's broken. It just doesn't work anymore. From one time to the next, it just decided to be dead. So I thought, okay, let me get a new one. And then, I got a new one, and this is a capacitor. So that means it doesn't actually; it has an unlimited life life uh, lifespan because mm -hmm. it doesn't charge energy. Uh, it doesn't save energy. It's a capacitor that has very little uh, power, but it's a very high amperage. Right? It can put out a lot of power for a very short per, per period of time, and then it slowly degrades. Over a couple of days, it will be empty, but it also charges very quickly. This one. Um, you can charge it by USB-C, by um, I think some something else. I think there's a ah yeah by by a cigarette lighter or directly from the battery that you connect it to. So you take these banana clamp shells, mm -hmm. you 
plug it in the battery and it charges from the remaining power that is in the battery. Not enough to charge the car, but if it's like six volts or seven volts or something, you charge it yes. for three to four minutes until it says I'm full. And then you press the button. It does a countdown from 10 seconds down so you can get in the car and then you start the car and it's it's working like a charm. What brand is this? Uh, it's an Italian brand. It's called Brave. Or brave. Okay. I don't know. All right. But anyhow, so this Check works it out, well, guys. Uh, and it's it's really amazing because you can put it in your car. It's it you can. There's no danger of it exploding. No lithium ion batteries in it. It is super safe. You can leave it there for years because it doesn't need to have any kind of battery charge in it because you can just basically charge it when you need it from the remaining power that's still in the battery. Super yeah. cool. I like that. Anyhow. Nice. That is cool. Tip for life. <laughs> so uh, I was going to say something else. Yeah. So I had one of these lithium ion ones. Every time I had a dead battery, it was never charged. <laughs> exactly. Exactly. Therefore, I got rid of it. And you know, I have had the same pair of jumper cables, which uh, my car, the mm -hmm. for some reason, has some super high amperage or needs super high amperage. So you cannot um, jump it with yeah. uh, crappy jumper cables right so essentially i put some crappy jumper cables in there um and tried and it, the car goes crazy it's ridiculously weird um the alarm starts beeping the windshield wipers start going crazy the <laughs> gauges start rattling and uh yeah it's not exactly reassuring mm. um uh so Obviously, the next thing I've done since then is I bought some insanely heavy gauge um, jumper cables. Yeah. Because you don't need to charge them. No. Nope. You keep it in the car. You just and need a second car or a second battery. Right? Exactly. Mm -hmm. Which I have flagged down people driving down the street and say, can you come here for a second? <laughs> Jump it. Takes two seconds. Yeah, boom, done. Everybody's yeah, happy. Yeah. So this is the thing is, for me, it's less of a hassle to just use a heavy duty jumper cable mm. than it is to yeah, keep yeah. If, charging if, every. Yeah. Totally. And then I have jumper cables I have in the car in any case, just uh, in, in case. Yep. But this was just for, for uh, you know, when you have the car parked in places where you can't pull a car close enough because the jumper cables I had were good, but they're sh pretty short, which mm -hmm. is yeah, yeah. the next problem that you can't get your other car close to where you need it to and all of the stuff. Yeah. Yeah. So, yeah, 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 exactly. Anyway, jumper yeah. cables, battery starters, energy. all good it stuff. It comes back to energy, which is our right. topic for today. Our topic today is energy and wasted energy, right? Correct. So, um, a lot of people have been saying that the watch industry as a whole um, is not very green. It's not very environmentally friendly. Yes. Um, and I've, of course, ha experienced this in a number of different ways. Um, you know, when we talk about uh, green or efficiency or anything, you know, uh, environmentally being conscious. Um, one of the things that the, the big debate right now is beyond the watch industry is, of course, uh, within electric cars, right? The idea of electric cars um, being green because they don't run off of uh, petrol, but however, in order to get the electricity that you then put into your electric car, you need to burn fossil fuels, uh, essentially to, unless you're using a, a windmill or nuclear power, you know, nuclear power or yeah, um, yeah. water power. Right? These are the kind of the big ways we could do this. Um, otherwise, everyone's just burning fossil fuels to generate electricity. Yeah. So is it truly greener than having a petrol car? Um, you know, of course not. Right. And then uh, the same thing goes for the manufacturing of the batteries that goes into it. It's hugely wasteful. It's extremely uh, toxic for the earth and um, the, the um, yeah. ingredients that go into these batteries, the cobalt and, um, you know, the deal, nickel yeah. that you have to mine for it. And um, they're coming out of Africa, mostly Africa um not known for their nicest working environments, right? And most ethical practices when it comes to these. So you're overworking miners, probably underage miners. Um, you know, you have a bunch of ethical breaches by creating these electric cars mm. as well. So people are saying they are offsetting their carbon footprint by driving an electric car. However, it's not exactly as clean as that, right? Yeah, so, I agree with that, yeah. Now, with the big, the release of the new Blanc Pong, uh, the uh, the swatch pond, we should say. Mm -hmm. um, a lot of people have spoken out about 
um, whether this is extremely um, unconscionable in Blanc Pond's, I guess, ethos, mindset, yeah. whatever, because Blanc Pond is known for a heavily, to be a heavily um, uh, environmentally friendly organization. They do a lot of charities, saving the rainforest, saving the oceans, sea yeah, turtles, yeah. It's mostly, everything, right? Yeah. Ocean, um, ocean so, preservation and, and yeah, definitely. So now um, I, I, the question becomes, and Ralph is going to basically go off on this in a moment, mm -hmm. but I'm just I'm just setting him up for it. He's the one with the Teasing with the, the knowledge in the subject. But uh, the question is, uh, and I, I this this entire episode came from a conversation Ralph and I had, or should I say, an argument that we had on mm -hmm. the phone, um, because I said these uh, Blanc Pond swatches are extremely environmentally unfriendly because first and foremost you have a plastic movement mm -hmm. uh, which is not serviceable so essentially you have to throw it away so the watches will now have a lifespan even though these straps are quote unquote made out of um recycled fishing nets mm -hmm. um that you, know, you could save the you know we'll put that to the side you can wear the strap on something else but then the plastic for the case they call it bio ceramic but of course it's only a portion of that is um ceramic the other portion is plastic again so lots of plastic and mm. uh, the irony would be if they end up in the bottom of the oceans as well right yeah um, blanc pond trying to save the oceans but then their crappy plastic watches end up in the bottom mm. um so that's the first thing we're going to discuss and the second thing i also want to bring up is the other argument for watch companies not being very um, environmentally conscious is in regards to their packaging, their boxes they make, um, you know, these massive, monstrously huge boxes that come in outer boxes, that come in a, another box, right? Um, mm. It's a lot of waste. And, and I don't know, of course, I keep all of my boxes, but I'm assuming uh, most people are just chucking these out. So what's the purpose of these yeah. watch industries putting together all these boxes and, and putting all this packaging together if 90% of watch buyers are just going to chuck it out, right? Um, yeah. They could do similar thing that Apple does is minimize packaging, have something small and useful like a sleeve or a travel case, and then some people would actually use it, right? Yeah. So two things. I don't know if there's anything else that you want to also no, no, present that's, that's, as another... That's a very good point. It's both of them. It's, it's basically what, what, what is sustainable, general sustainability in the watch world. And yeah. packaging is one big point of it. I think... Um, uh, I think it was bright. Yeah, no, it was Breitling. Uh, I have prepared that even here. So I have a um, Breitling in 2019, I think. Was it 2019? No, 2020. They started to make their new little pouch these boxes that you can flap open and it's also a nice travel pouch right for your watches which is made of a kind of a nylon other stuff yeah. which is actually completely done out of recycled pet or upcycled pet plastic and they reclaimed that from plastic bottles so it's pretty cool it's entirely made out of recycled material and that is that is where you where you actually have to have to dive into um the packaging, I think, is the biggest amount of environmental impact um, that is easy to fix, right? Because the packaging yeah. you can you can change from one day to the next. Um, and you're sending these across the world as well. Let's yeah, keep exactly. that in mind, I right? Mean, when I think about the box, watch boxes I have, I have this um, Blancpain Pelican case, which is lovely from my 50 Fathoms, right? Um, inside is a, is a nice, uh, leather pouch. I mean, leather is in itself is not very sustainable to, to, to create things off, right? You should use maybe vegan leather now, nowadays or other things because, well, anyhow, um, you can talk about how the, an, an animal is being utilized, including the, the, the skin and the leather and all of this stuff because it's in any case slaughtered. So why not use the, use, use yeah. the leather for it? I think a cow is being, if, if it's uh, a cow for human consumption, I think 98% of the cow are actually utilized. There's only like it's about 2% in inverted commas waste, right? So it's at mm -hmm. least yep. um, utilized to its full extent to, yeah, I don't know if you can ever say make it worth it, but it's a, it's a tough, tough one to talk about. Anyhow, 
let's not talk about animals. Let's talk about these watches and these products. And I think when I look at my uh, Omega box, which is beautiful, right? This big wooden box I, and the best all of this boxes. stuff. Absolutely stunning. But I literally see this if I rearrange my storage room or <laughs> the one time I actually take it out of the box the first time I buy it. That's yep. it. Then, but it makes I, such a difference. I know. I mean, I love my Speedmaster big box more than any other box I own. Yeah. By the way, my it's 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 just it's so fantastic. It's nice, but then but then really this it's heavy. It's big. It needs to be shipped. It needs to be uh, in in these locations everywhere around the world. And it's 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 really. <sighs> Look, Rolex is very successful in having these tiny boxes that are really not very impressive. By any but you means. have to be Rolex to have this. <laughs> if you're not Rolex, it's yes. not going to work. Yeah, probably. Maybe. Imagine, <laughs> imagine, you know, uh, uh, I don't know, Tissot. Uh, Tissot has very small boxes, actually. Yeah, they're mostly. So let's see paper. who else. No, who else is? Yeah. yeah, they are. They're very well done. But imagine someone who is, uh, I don't know, IWC, and IWC giving you a little tiny box. I mean. IWC, do they have the presence to do this? I don't know, right? It has to be Rolex. Yeah, I think IWC has started that. And it's, it's a, I, I read an article, which is a, quite interesting about this, um, where the, the IWC actually mentioned that they, had, that was in eight, 1980, 20, sorry, 2018 or so, when they said, yeah, we will actually now create a, um, 30% reduction in packaging materials by the by 2020. So it was in, I think, two years or so. They had the Richmond Green Book. So the Richmond Group, where IWC is part of or a member of, had declared that they are going to commit to these principles of um, sustainability, uh, you know, responsible origins, environmental protection uh, measures, all of this stuff for the luxury products and also the packaging and in uh, in a good um in a good let's say german swiss way iwc has set up a sustainable packaging committee <laughs> and they were working on these specific measures to achieve these 30 percent reduction in weight and volume and all of this stuff the swatch group had also done that and i must say now talking about the swatch group I'm talking about bioceramic and all of the stuff and people saying, oh, isn't that ironic that Blancpain is saving the ocean and then creating plastic that might end up in the ocean? Mm -hmm. First of all, one third, is it one third? One third of it is plastic or is it two thirds plastic? One, uh, I forgot about that now. Um, that's interesting. Uh, I think it's uh, bioceramic. Is it one third, two thirds? I, I don't know. Uh, doesn't really matter, I think. Um, so the point is, this bioceramic is is actually the ceramic part is talcum powder and whatever these kind of things, plant based sand. That's the ceramic part. Yeah. The rest is castor oil made from. I think, what is it made from? Um, I I looked this up and I forgot it again. Um, it's castor oil. Plant oil. It's a plant oil, basically. So that, that means the plastic is not made out of uh, mineral oil. So it's made from plant oil. So the entire swatch watch case is basically made out of plants. Okay. Yeah, it's bioceramic, but it actually is all sort of plants and some minerals mixed together. So it's not as bad. Is it, um, yeah, it takes a few hundred years to actually be digested by the earth or just wither away eventually. So it is 200 to 400 years, depending on what kind of plastic it is. Compared to, let's say, an aluminum, for example, um, or uh, any other metal, a kilogram of plastic needs about four kilograms of uh, CO2 emissions to be produced. And this is general plastic, not this bioceramic, just general plastic. And a kilogram of steel needs about 10 kilograms of this. But, However, but, 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 so but, 10 to 4, yeah. right? Yeah, 10 But to four. wouldn't and, you say, so that is a, what, a, a 2 to 5 ratio. Um, wouldn't you say if you were to keep a plastic watch, 
Yeah, but also <laughs> the two plastic, years. plastic watches are also lighter. So that means you need much less of these one kilo, right? You don't need like 100 oh, grams of correct. plastic yeah, that, okay, and that makes sense. of metal. Yeah. So no, but I'm big, just saying you'd yeah. keep a metal watch for, let's say, 10 years and you'd keep a plastic watch for one year or at least something like 10 times the uh, length that you would have one of these bioceramic See, nonsenses, they, no, right? They'd fall apart. Yeah, to, to your, to your so, yeah, that, that's a good point. And also you have to say metal is something, steel, aluminum, everything metal related is very good recyclable at the moment already. So it's like you mm -hmm. can create and, and Panerai does that and some other watch manufacturers do that. They already create use their e-steel and all of the stuff, recycled materials to a very large uh, 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 yeah, extent. So like the majority of the components are recycled in that yeah. steel. So you can do that. You can recycle uh, steel a lot. So that's good. Plastic, very hard. There's about 10% of plastics in the world are actually getting recycled. The rest ends up in landfills. So it's not good. The, the environmental general environmental thing of, of plastic is definitely not good. And some of it ends up in the oceans. Again, everything that ends up in the ocean is actually illegal, right? Yeah. So you, you shouldn't dump trash into the ocean. That is not happening in most countries. Some do that illegally, some, um, yeah, companies. But in general, this is something that is, that is not supposed to happen. Then, I think anything that the, the Swatch Group does, let's say 2 million watches, 2 million moons watches, they make about 50 tons of plastic trash. 2 millions of them. Mm -hmm. All of it together. Okay. Which is nothing. Absolutely nothing in the big scheme of things. A city like, let's say a city of Paris, produces hundred thousands of tons of waste in a day. 50 tons in two years. It's nothing. It's just one city, right? I mean, worldwide, I don't know how much many tons of, of trash we produce or plastic trash. We use, I think, 5 million water bottles every few minutes, right? Worldwide. So if you can create, let's say, um, a watch strap, which is something that I think Bucherer did this. And uh, no, sorry, uh, Breitling started that, I think, in 2018 already um, with the Super Ocean. Super Ocean Heritage, where they have actually made the entire strap out of recycled water bottles, plastic water bottles. And they said they needed about 30-ish half-liter water bottles for one strap. That's a good thing, right? And it's entirely made out of that. Uh, hey, ironically, and, and this is the one place where you want it to be used more. You want to use more plastic, right? Wow. Because the more... Recycled yeah. bottles, that means less is left in the world, right? Yeah, correct, correct. Exactly. You're taking it away, right? And you're, you're using this, actually, this kind of, of, of yeah. plastic. Uh, sorry, I, I mixed it up. The Breitling was done out of um, recycled fishing nets, which is actually what, what is happening now with the Blanc Pond, right? The Blanc Pond, exactly. Same. So they're using that. Um, and the Karl, Karl Bucher used to make this with the recycled bottles, and they needed 30 bottles for one. So it's uh, Oris does a lot of this where they use dials and the back Oh, the, the what's it called? Dial, right? <laughs> yes. The, the, uh, the clean, trash clean dial ocean. or whatever, what Oris do they call it? Ocean. I think they call uh, it the what do they, they call the dial? Um, uh, quick Google search here. Or is trash they called it, dial? They called it clean ocean, I think. Uh, no, no, no. Upcycle. Uh, it's called yeah. the Aquis Date Upcycle, and the dial mm. is made of recycled trash yeah, yeah. Um, out of the oceans. So essentially, I believe it's out of the oceans, right? Yeah. Uh, if I'm not mistaken. Yeah, yeah. They um, use actual actual plastic taken out of the ocean to do that. Yeah. So yeah, yeah. Recycled ocean plastics to create the unique and colorful dials. Yeah. So, so uh, and then they look awesome, though. It's it's a very yeah, and it's. I think see so, see a lot of it is just uh, marketing. So when when you say you 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 are a child of let's say the eighties or so, and you you we grew up with uh, polyester, right? And polyester as a clothing material was, yeah, cheap and not nice, right? Mm -hmm. So uh, now, this is by the way from from Oris. Here's a quick number. Yeah. Uh, 13 million tons of plastic makes its way into the oceans each year. Yeah, that's a lot. So it, it is a yeah, thirteen million not a little tons. Little amount. And now it's the thirteen million. Yeah, and now think about how many zeros that are, and then you have fifty tons. All of the entire moon swatches ever produced are not even fifty tons. Yeah, so it's tiny, and that's the thing. the The watch industry, while being 
such a small actor technically because there is not much they actually produce in 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 so in 50 volume. tons or what was what was the swatch, the moon swatch how many tons altogether let's say 50 for 2 million pieces okay and this and is what not did i say 130 million 13 right? million tons yeah was it 13 million 13 one, three, doing nine. a quick maths here guys 0. Mm-hmm. 0.0000038 percent <laughs> Yeah. Of the total mm. annual garbage in the oceans, yeah, could if, be a, if a, all attributed to all the end, moon swatches. Yeah. If all the yeah. moon swatches were dumped in the sea, it wouldn't make a difference. Um, but but I think the point. Don't is, do that. Don't don't no, dump no, your no, moon no. swatch into the sea. You shouldn't swim with it in any case. <laughs> uh, with a blanc pot, you can, of course. Yeah, yeah, with a blanc pot, you can because it's fifty fathoms. Yeah, um, but but my point is there that it's not about really this little piece of metal. I mean, there's there's um, one thing that we should really talk about is ethical sourcing, which, which you touched on it before, mm-hmm. where you said, okay, yep. the gold being ethically mined, that is one of the things because you can make gold with a lot of environmental impact, right? With using mercury and terrible working conditions and all of this stuff, you can poison the environment and the people who do it actually. So um, Correct. Yeah. Chopin, for example, many, many, many years ago in 2013 already, I think they had to, the journey to sustainable luxury in 2000, uh, 10 years ago, exactly. Uh, and they have a, been a pioneer in the world of jewelry and, and watchmaking. Um, and they have worked together with a consultancy firm to actually source every metal and every precious metal they do ethically, right? And that's yep. they even run their own mines in certain countries and invested in that to make sure that these are run properly and are not the envi- environmental impact is minimized. And then I think that's the way. Does it make a huge difference in the world? Probably not, but no. I think it's it's the message is that every little thing matters. And if you can do, you know, this marginal gains, basically, if you just take every little step on the way and you can take a tiny bit here, a tiny bit there, it will add up eventually, right? Mm-hmm. Yep. It's it's like the story I know if if you if you know the story of Nico Rosberg winning against Lewis Hamilton, um, back in I think it was 2016, where he said he applied this marginal gains religiously, right? Where he said somebody came to him and said, "I can remove the seams in your in your gloves," and that saves us three grams or four grams. And he said, "Well, the, the, every single yeah. thing." Added up to well, this, this is what the, the, uh, the, the you know, Ineos team, the cycling team, did as well. Uh, yeah. When uh, Chris Froome was cycling for them, this was back when they were called Team Sky, mm-hmm. um, and it was the same exact situation. Marginal gains they had. So if you look at our um, the pedals that yeah. they used, um, our pedals are two sided essentially. So you could pick up in either way with with the speed play pedals that uh, Ineos was using. Mm-hmm. So they developed a cover for the shoe so that when you (laughs) um, clipped into the pedal, it was an Mm. aerodynamic shield essentially so that the bottom of your shoe, instead of having the pedal stick out, would now be an aerodynamic thing as well. Yeah. So they did all of these tiny little things and they won, I don't know how many was it, seven, um, five, something like this, Tour de France's. Mm -hmm. So um, clearly what they did It's it's a, it's a philo- word, philosophy. But... It's just um, looking marginal at, gains, and they're known looking for Looking at yep. every single thing that you can improve and do it. It's a bit like kaizen, mm-hmm. right? The Japanese yeah, way of manufacturing. Exactly. Continuous improvement. If you can improve something, even if it's it might not make financial sense to do it, just do it because you can improve the way. Right. I worked for a Japanese company, a manufacturing company, um, mm-hmm. and they had kaizen. Yeah. And they wanted us to tell them if there's anything that uh, you know that we think is inefficient or not good, yeah. we would have to let them know. But of course, my logic was, I don't care. I'm not personally gaining from it. it the company would make more money, but this is my issue, right? I, I'm not a good employee in that sense. Oh, yeah, yeah. You because should, I look out for number one and not the whole company. But essentially, this would work. But the problem is, if the, the employees don't have a vested interest in the company, who cares if the company makes more money, right? Because yeah, you're not going to see you any sh- of it. You should have then an employee beneficial program there as well. I mean, exactly. Bonus programs, other things. But I think in general, anyway, what I want to say is, yeah, for, for this, is, is it is it greenwashing that the watch industry does? Is this just simply 
yeah, image enhancing marketing stunts. Um, is this? I, I believe. Stuff? I believe it is. And I, said, and I believe Apple is doing the exact same thing. Yeah, to a certain extent. Though Apple produces way more things than the watch industry. Right? Yeah. But anyhow, but, but my point is there. Um, wristband textiles, plastic medallions made from recycled trash, like you just mentioned the Oris mm -hmm. and all of this stuff. This makes no difference to solving the world's problem. No, In uh, but, but yeah, but but exactly, but but the point is there. It's about raising awareness, and even if it touches. In, in a luxury product that is as small as a watch and companies are going through this ordeal to do this and they're incorporating these elements of recycled material that sends the message that it's worth doing that we as a society cannot ignore let, let me things. pause i, I want to mention this um, hmm. i said this last time with apple apple makes these bold claims that they're going to do something that's environmentally friendly and ironically out of sheer happenstance, those changes allow them to make more money, right? <laughs> Removing a charger from a box, making boxes smaller so that they can ship more in a, in a pallet. Yeah. Um, all of these are directly positively impacting Apple's bottom line. Yeah. So, so it's, that's it's... Apple is 100% greenwashing. Now, on the other hand, we look but at the watch it, industry. It is actually Does not Oris alive. make... It yeah. It's not. That's what I'm saying yeah. is... Oris could probably easier make a aqueous dial out of metal, as every other dial is. Mm -hmm. They made it out of this recycled plastic and sold it for the exact same price, which mm -hmm. means they're not making more money by doing this, but it is more work for them to go through this uh, and to get these dials, as opposed to just getting simple metal discs. Um, and the same thing goes for a lot of these you know, watch companies. Um, yeah. Uh, Blanc Pond, for instance, right? They don't have to do all this um, environmental activism, but they do. Rolex does it as well. Yeah, and a lot of charity. Essentially, work. Um, essentially, what I'm saying is, it makes no money directly for them. Whether their reputation increases is great, but it's not the same as what Apple's doing when they are physically removing parts and saying it's better for it, mm. right? Yeah, That'd be the same as, as, as Rolex tomorrow saying, you know what, we're no longer making bracelets. That's an additional extra that you can buy separately. We're just gonna give you the watch head um, for the same price as we did before. And now this is, uh, well, you know, for the same price, of course, well, because we're environmentally friendly because it's smaller packaging. Well, if... And that is that is only makes sense if you already have a Rolex watch, which bracelet you can utilize. Exactly, that's, that's but you know, the you argument get the you point. do with a this charger, a right? Because you're saying like, yes. okay, you already probably already have a charger, so you don't need. But they've changed one. the chargers three times, from the dock connector to the lightning to the now USB C. So you cannot yeah, say that US, US, we are to have a charger. I think, I think USB C was basically the, U, the European Union. You know, saying, well, you have Force to them, have, of course, every yeah. mobile phone has yeah, to yeah. have a USB C charger. So now that's, that's a, it's a must. So that it's, mm -hmm. it's just funny they didn't mention this. They just said, like, oh, yeah, it's better, it's better, it's faster, it's, you know, all of this. Exactly. Stuff. They didn't mention they were forced to do it. <laughs> Correct. <laughs> Anyhow, so I think, God, coming, I love coming, and hate Apple. It's a love hate relationship. Yeah. Coming back to, to, to the watches. And I think, um, there it is, we already have the idea that a, a proper luxury watch is forever, right? It's like diamonds are forever. Mm -hmm. You yeah. only look after your Patek for the next generation. So these are things that are not necessarily thrown away. Some of them are. And, um, the, the amount of, of, yeah metal and steel in the watch is negligible, same as the amount of plastic potentially. But I agree with you, a plastic watch is very, very much more likely to be thrown away, especially if it can't be properly serviced. I mean, in this case, the movement can be exchanged by swatch, but it can't be serviced because it's a, it's a glued put together once regulated, that's it, right? Yeah. Uh, movement. Again, that movement is whatever, 10 grams or something. It's, it's, it's ridiculously light, right? So it's the entire watch is 30 grams or 32 grams, I think, in, in uh, the moon swatch with, with brace, with the original bracelet on it. So it's, it's a ridiculously light watch. So there's not much material on it. But again, there, if you source it, um, ethically and environmentally friendly and you recycle a lot, which is a problem with the plastic. But you can, and of course, the newer plastics. I don't know if you had 
newer plastic bags. Now these plastic bags that you get, they're all uh, biodegradable, right? They all fall, yeah, yeah. fall apart exactly. after a year or two. So you know, I, mm -hmm. I put something in the plastic bag, stored it in my basement, and then I think a year later or two years later, I wanted to pick it's it up gone. and it, it's all the crumbled in my fingers. And I thought like, oh, <laughs> the plastic bag was... Well, other plastic bags will probably still be there when I'm old, dead, and gone. <laughs> still yeah, look yeah. exactly the same. But some... Uh, yeah, so we, we are doing a few things in order to make it better. However, plastic shouldn't get into our... Um, in this in the circle, and we are using way too many plastic things. So I think generally removing plastic things out of your life is a good thing. If you com if you replace it with something that is has a long lifetime, and I mean a very long lifetime, and it's made of some yeah. more sustainable materials that have a history of being easy to recycle, like steel and other um, metal materials. So, yeah. But but as you said with the electric cars in the beginning, you always have to see what is the production of it, what is the environmental impact of getting this the raw materials for what you're actually doing. And there, I must say, a plant based plastic, plant based oil, plant based oh, sorry, plant based ceramic, a plant based based plastic and and oil that they use to make the plastic, that makes a difference. The next thing is marketing. As I said, with the polyester, I started. Polyester is now something we in our generation look at. Oh, saying like, oh, that's a cheap thing. If you couldn't afford the cotton clothing, you would have polyester clothing, right? The the seventies, eighties polyester sweaters or something that would yeah. be horrible. Um, but nobody wants a polyester sweater anymore. Nobody buys that. Now you use marketing and you make it microfiber, and suddenly people go like, hey, wow, it's microfiber. So what is microfiber made that, of? It's recycled microfiber. <laughs> microfiber. <laughs> microfiber is polyester. <laughs> it's just cool, right? Microfiber is yeah. cool. It's nice. Keeps you warm in the winter. But it's still polyester. Um, so yeah, there's a lot of these things where you can just make it uh, um, environmentally friendly, use marketing. And this is, I think, the watchmaking, the green watchmaking, the whole idea that this is what the that the, the tiny luxury watch market actually does that is attention. It is they're doing it to raise attention. It's a good thing that they do because that might affect other things in your life that you actually pay attention to these things and say like, yeah, we can do this and um, we want to do this. I mean, the next thing is I think what we will see in the watch world and that will be a big controversy, especially with the two of us. We love our leather straps. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The next As thing, Apple just announced, right? Yep. Apple just started it. And usually when Apple starts something, like they did with the Easy Exchange watch straps, mm -hmm. my God, that was when I saw my the first Apple Watch 10 years ago. Was it 10 years ago? Seven years ago? Yeah. You, every, ago. I thought that the, uh, the strap exchange Why does no one else do it? Yeah. Bloody hell. So, it needed a bloody computer company making a watch. And, and once again, my, my Santos mm. is the exact same mechanism. Yes, the pressing of that button—it's the exact same. And I so, think this, um, your Santos is like the, the the I think the pinnacle of absolutely uh, toolless bracelet design. Links you can oh do God, everything so, with it without proper tools. It doesn't really make sense why because you're not switching it more than once. But so this still, doesn't make too much sense. But you but, can design something in a way that you yeah. don't need all of these complicated things. I mean, I have yep. I have so many. I mean, even if you just take one brand, Casio, for example, with my metal G-Shocks, if you have a titanium G-Shock, it doesn't use the screws or the, the spring bars. The normal metal has spring bars for each link. Super easy to change. Yeah. Chup, chup, chup. You know, no problem. Then the, the titanium ones, because for whatever reason, they react bad with other materials, other metals, titanium Mm -hmm. It's not as good, whatever. And there is, there's a reason for it, but still, you have these tiny pin and collar things. Also, in the in some of the Grand Seikos with the titanium bracelets, you have these pin and collar stuff that is just a nightmare to to work with because there's tiny pieces, tiny screws, everything flies around. It's just not no no no. It's really bad. And then you have Cartier coming yeah. in and saying like, "All right, here, look at what we came up with." 
uh, once again, they're jewelers, right? Yeah. That, that's their core competency. Mm. So if it's a jewelry company, they, they're they thinking differently than a watch company. I've seen this with, I think, with Bucher as well. The first time I, I had a Bucher watch with them, um, also 10 years ago with a, with a bracelet. And I thought, geez, man, that is a, that is a nice bracelet. I think I mean, when jewelry companies, proper jewelry companies make, yep. make bracelets, you can just feel the quality. It's just like when, yeah. Like with, with Rolex, right? When you when you suddenly see them doing these bracelets so well, which they didn't necessarily have the best history in making these super high quality yeah. bracelets, but now they top of it, right? So yeah. Anyhow, so I think I don't know how they jumped that made that jump because they went from one of the worst bracelets <laughs> yeah. to one of the best bracelets in the world in one generation of, of yeah, watch yeah, product I agree. development. That is that is amazing. That was really but, amazing. Yeah. So, anyhow, anyway. so yeah, you have this bioceramic is not as bad as people might make it think, right? And Two no, the point of your ceramic. story that you didn't finish was leather straps oh, yeah, are going just, away, and they're they most might, likely going to go away, yeah, very soon in our in our lifetimes, right? And then what? And then that's the question. We're going to have a bunch of these vegan straps. We're going to have a lot of NATOs mm -hmm. and you know similar mm -hmm. style textile straps. Yeah. So, but my suggestion. To you, Ralph, mm -hmm. go buy doubles of all of your favorite straps <laughs> because who knows when they will stop making them. No, yeah, it's, it's even when you buy pre-owned watches and you have this issue that when you buy something from Japan and so on, they tell you already, it will ship without the strap. Or as they... Because you can't, but that's the site's uh, yeah. uh, because thing. They cannot ship ex exotic animals across. Yeah. Alligators. Um, yeah. Across the border, yeah, exactly. Which, and this is the one thing that I never understood. Most of the alligator leather used by watch companies, I, I would dare to say it's 90, 90, 95% comes from farmed animals that are farmed in yep. environmentally overseen things they're, but they're, they're trying not, to make yes this is right? true but they they also want to maintain this right yeah. if you say you can do whatever you want with alligator leather the people are going to start killing true, the alligators true, true. and uh, they're going to say oh well now i can sell the skin true so that's kind of what i think they're trying yeah. to protect and, and, you know, iwc announced i think it was this year let me just quickly check here um no in 2021 on on the watches and wonders they have announced a line I don't know where this went, and that's why I'm telling you that. It's two years ago. They said they have introduced a line of sustainable straps made from a paper-based material called Timber Tex. I've never mm -hmm. actually heard about this until we, we planned this episode, so I researched that. So it's 80% made of natural plant fibers. It's handmade with natural dyes in Italy, so you have a really nice, beautiful quality. And these Timber Tex straps, they can be put on certain Portofino and Portuguese models. So they started looking for alternatives for leather-based straps in 2018 with the goal to find something that is both vegan and green, right? So mm -hmm. cellulose <clears throat> straps, paper, managed forest, tree farms, all of this stuff to make sure that whatever they take out of nature, they somehow put back in. Yep. So it's a good way of thinking about your business. Saying like, if I use natural resources, I'm trying to put everything in. And by the way, the IWC factory runs on 100% uh, renewable energy. They only they, they purchase their energy from uh, suppliers that only use renewable energy for that. So that's, I think, again, little things that your watch companies might do. Yeah. <sighs> Then make make a difference or raise attention at least, right? So that's all of it is important. So so I do want to mention also the fact that uh, we have this, uh, you know, uh, Cartier uh, straps that are also made out of apple or pineapple or whatever it is, right? <laughs> yeah. So I mean, in my mind, once again, we we just said uh, Cartier makes one of the best bracelets in the world. They also make extremely mm. nice straps. So if they're willing to risk putting their watches onto a pineapple strap or whatever, Apple, I think it's Apple, um, then yeah, you have to start thinking, okay, it can be done because Cartier will not do something that they don't believe in, right? Yeah, they're one of yeah. those companies that if it doesn't fit their, um, you know, their MO, 
they're not going to, mm. um, they're not going to release it. And so this tells me that it is possible to, to get these yeah. I, I, straps to a level, a quality level where it can be interchangeable with leather. Yeah. Yeah. I think that is true. So I think we will have a quality of it. We will have the longevity of it, maybe of leather. Uh, it's a leather is an amazing, I mean, it has been used for hundreds or thousands of years for clothing, for luggage, for everything. I mean, from your backpack yep. that the, the old, uh, you know, first homo sapiens in the world used as a tools and, and store storage for things. Um, transporting water, all of this stuff is done with, with leather stuff. And it's, it's, it's come this long way of treating it and knowing how to treat it to, for it to last so long. And I think maybe it's in our DNA yep. to a certain extent, but I think in one of our last watch, watch meetups, somebody brought an, some kind of, I didn't know what it, what it was, a wallet or watch roll or something, or made out of a very specific leather. And we were all sitting there sniffing on it and thinking, oh my God, this smells so good. This mm -hmm. leather smell, right, of really yeah. nice soft leather. And we were all just sniffing on it. And it's just, <laughs> I don't know. That's one thing you're never going to replicate. Yeah. <laughs> Will it smell of yeah. apple or pineapple? I, I don't know. It won't, I yes, guess. But, but my point is, there's a tactile, yeah, tactile sensation about it that once you experienced it, I think you understand it a bit better. Maybe you also value it a bit better, these good materials. But on the other hand, I think um, there's only one way. If, if that's what we need to do to... Um, you know, save a bit of the planet. Yeah, but then forward. what are we going to stop eating animals as well? Because it's, as we you mentioned, should. essentially, if we're eating cows, <laughs> yes. yeah, if we're eating cows, then we're going to use the skin for th something, right? So yeah. this is, yeah, we should. Ah. and you have to think about what about, what about Oris with Servo Volante, right? Apparently in, in the, in Switzerland, they had these deers that were overpopulated. They had to be taken out. So they made a big thing about ethically, you know, eliminating or minimizing the population of these deers. Mm. Um, and they started making leather goods out of it. And then they said yeah. specifically that 100% of these deers, you know, it's being utilized, bodies, yeah. whatever you want to call it, were used, right? It was eaten. It was, leather was made. Yeah. Everything was done. So there was no waste. Yeah. So we can't think of this as all negative, right? Because in some places mm. we have to you know thin the population right and that's exactly what they had to do with these deers these yeah i mean this is like look i'm, I'm from germany we have we have no predators no apex predators in the in the country for hundreds of years right so it means that yep. deer population all of the stuff there's no wolves there's no bears there, nothing eats deer right so yep. that's why we have hunters that have to cull a specific amount every year that they're being uh, yep. dictated by the government saying like you need to reduce the population by 50 or 60 or whatever a year in we, we order had the to same maintain thing in Texas. balance. Yeah. yeah. In Texas, we had it with wild boars. Correct, yeah. So people were, um, because wild boars are insanely dangerous with those massive tusks. Oh yeah, they're, they're so, uh, vicious creatures. Essentially, yeah. they were <laughs> given, a, they strong. said for every boar you kill, the government gave you, I think it was like $750. Mm-hmm. I mean, and you kept the boar. I like them. They're, so, they're very smart, smart animals. I mean, they can be vicious if they are cornered, but oh, they're, they're, they're super, especially if they have cubs yeah. or babies oh, or yeah, piglets yeah. or they're whatever you call them. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. But I no, wanted to come on that yeah, bombshell. Yeah, I wanted to come back to <laughs> it. I think it's not apple. It is. You were right with pineapple because Hodinkee also has pineapple. Hodinkee has pineapple, traps, but yeah. I think Cartier has apple. But yeah, that's true. I heard about apple leather before, so maybe apple and pineapple. Maybe it has to do with the, um, the name, solar the beet. Yeah. Has yeah, it's apples. By apples the way, from Switzerland and Germany. Speaking of, but, it says specifically. Oh yeah, German apples, very nice. Um, the German apples, <laughs> German pineapples, sehr, sehr gut. German pineapples, no. not so much. No. <laughs> um, yeah. If you come from a country where, where pineapples grow and you know how to taste how they taste, and then you eat a supermarket pineapple in Germany, you will be very disappointed. Um, but this. So you just mentioned this, the solar beet Cartier, mm -hmm, yep. which is technically one of the best um, environmentally friendly um, watches because you have a movement and a battery in it that lasts for decades, probably 20 to 30. They said 21 years, right? 21. Okay. Yeah. More or less guaranteed, right? It might Guaranteed even, for 21 years, they said. Last a bit longer. 
Which means if they're guaranteeing it for 21, it's probably lasting like 25, 30, yeah. right? Realistically. And that is, I mean, while there is a battery in it that's being charged by the so by the power of the sun, you never have to replace it. In let's say, it's 25. not like G Shock hasn't done this. No, of course they have. But and this is the cool thing. I have ten year old watch from Citizen with Echo Drive and all of the stuff. It still holds months of, of power. Yep. in its batteries without having to you know put it on a windowsill so it's it's amazing it's these these kind of things are good yep. because also normal replaceable batteries for quartz watches are also environmental impact because that's a tiny bit of lithium in these little button cells but it's still there i recently yep. had to replace all of the batteries in my apple air tags and it pained me oh shit and i thought i, like, I have so many of those and I, damn. I totally forgot and then that. you have my car car keys right and they also complained that the battery is empty so i had these are all these yeah. cr2032 or whatever they're called these yeah. batteries and i thought damn see there's a lot of batteries i just bought it i think 20 of them no. on uh, amazon for 10 dirhams and i hate using these throwaway batteries i always find yeah. this I, I wanted to recharge my batteries for a long time but then also the rechargeable ones eventually die right they don't hold a charge anymore so I have to say, I have, I own a bunch of these Eneloop batteries, yeah. um, hundreds probably, right? And I have only had two, which just recently happened, actually die and no longer take a charge. Yeah. Because essentially they, they are guaranteeing 2,100 cycles. Wow, that's a lot. Yeah, that's, that's why it's Eneloop, right? Eneloops are known for this. 2,100 cycles for the regular batteries or 880 cycles for the pro batteries, mm. um, which is still insane. For how much you're paying for it, it's marginally more than the regular batteries. Yeah. And then, of course, you have to buy the charger, but it, it does take seven hours to charge. But it's it, they're they're fantastic. I, I highly highly recommend them in everything. Yeah, I had this I had this um, before as well. I mean, rechargeables like from Varta or something other these these battery manufacturers, and I use this for everything from my Apple Watch. Uh, sorry, not Apple Watch for my Apple Mouse and all of this stuff. Now they come. That's with what that. I have in my Apple Mouse right yeah. now. Yeah, and, and the keyboard and everything had re, you know rechargeable batteries because I thought I can't get my head around having just throwaway batteries because I always felt that's no. not that's not and right. it costs more to keep throwing them away. Mm. Yeah, You're gonna true. lose an arm and a leg on this, but anyway, okay. Ah. On that bombshell, I think we talked enough about yes. saving the planet. I hope we've instilled a sense of uh, yeah, I don't know, and, pride in the watch industry. And if if you can, people. right. Every now and then, do a little thing, like the marginal gains. If you just decide one day to not use a specific throwaway paper cup in, in, in Starbucks, even though when you know that you're sitting there not moving and you finish your coffee, just not take the paper cup, right? Yeah. <laughs> or, or don't throw it in the ocean. <laughs> yes. And if you don't need another watch, just don't buy it. <laughs> <laughs> okay, yeah, no, that, that doesn't happen. work. No, no, sorry, we can't. Yeah, no, that's we did too much say this: to use your old car. <laughs> don't buy a new car. A new car will always have a higher carbon offset, even if it's more fuel efficient than your old one that is perfectly still yeah. functioning fine. Yeah, I think there is a reason. So, yeah, that, the, that continuing to drive the old one for for a couple of years longer is definitely better for the planet. Yeah, if you can shape off and on that bombshell. Yeah, and on that Anyhow, bombshell. So. <laughs> Have yeah, do do the little things. Every little thing counts eventually. Yes, do the needful. <laughs> um, anyway, all right, guys, um, follow us at Loom Plotters on Instagram and enjoy your watches. We hope to see you enjoy your watches, yeah. your vegan straps. <laughs> And uh, if, if, by the way, if anybody <laughs> does own a vegan strap, yeah. I'd be very curious to know how it is. One of these vegan leather straps hit us up in, in Instagram and I'm curious to know how they are. I think this in calls, the, in the, the long term. This calls for another mall walk and we have to go to the IWC boutique and just t t t check out the Timber Tex line of straps. And the Cartier, which we, they don't even have in the store, but oh, okay. we'll do that. <laughs> next, next one, we'll do Mall of the Emirates. We've already planned it. Okay. So... Uh, All right. Bye, see you guys. Bye. See you.